came expecting you're going to leave changed. You're going to be touched. <clears throat> the Holy Spirit will touch you. In fact, if the Holy Spirit's in you, you have to get touched. Amen? Amen. If you don't get touched, you need to question whether you really have the Holy Spirit in you. Whether you've accepted and you're in the right mind to expect. The title of the message today is When Your Mess Becomes a Message. I used that last week. I was talking about God can take your mess, turn it into a message. Amen. And uh, now we're going to actually break that down. You know, I don't know how many of y'all know how much power you have. But if you listen today, you have a bunch. Amen. Amen. The power of God is in you if you've accepted Him. The power of God is in you. You know, ever since before the day you were born, <laughs> Satan's been trying to kill you. Ever since, I mean, ever since before the day you was born, Satan has made it available to have you killed by abortion. And then after you were born, Satan has been trying everything he can to keep you from doing what you're doing today, which is here to worship our God. Amen. The one and only true God. And Satan's doing everything he can to pull you away from that. Some of y'all probably had a battle with Satan today just to get here to church this morning. Amen? Satan tries to keep you from being here. Satan wants to destroy you. He wants to destroy that relationship that you have with God. He wants you to be with him in hell. He doesn't want to be lonely. Right now the enemy is doing his best to destroy your walk with the Lord. It's always a battle. There's no Happy Meal religion here. And because God is about to provide you a great turnaround, that's when Satan attacks you the most. When you're at a low and you're about to have this awesome turnaround, Satan sees that, so he does everything he can to keep you at that low spot. He wants you to dwell in your weakness. He wants you to dwell in the past. He wants you to dwell in your past failures. And if you will, you'll fail. And your relationship with God will be destroyed. I'm going to read from Jeremiah chapter 1. We've mentioned a couple times since our visit to the cross uh, because of a memorial to the aborted babies. Jeremiah chapter 1, 4 through 10. Say amen when you're there. Amen. amen. Glory. Then the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Before I formed thee in the belly, I knew thee. And before thou camest forth out of the womb, I sanctified thee. And I ordained thee a prophet unto the nations. Before, he, before he's ever placed in the womb. And then said I, oh Lord God, behold, I cannot speak, for I am a child. But the Lord said unto me, Say not, I am a child. For thou shalt go to all that I shall send thee. And whatever so I command thee, thou shalt speak. Shut up. You're going to do what I told you. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Verse 8. Be not afraid of their faces, for I am with thee to deliver thee, saith the Lord. He said, I'm going to help you. You ain't on your own. You have the power I'm going to give you. And then the Lord put forth his hand and touched the mouth. Woo! And the Lord said unto thee, Behold, I have put my words in thy mouth. Amen. See, I have this day set thee over the nations and over the kingdoms to root out Say root out. root out. And pull down. And to destroy. And to throw down. And to build and plant. Are y'all ready? You all ready to tear down? Man, we got some strongholds. Woo, all of us do. We got some things we need to tear down today. And you know, God has given you the power. You can't do it on your own. We can't do anything on our own except get in trouble. <laughs> Amen. That's... Glory to God. Before we were formed in the womb, before we were ever formed in the womb, God knew us. God ordained us. God sanctified us, anointed us, every one of us. Y'all getting this, right? Yes. Glory to God. I got some norths and souths. Have your lips been touched today? Yes. Have your lips been touched? You believe that God's got the power and it's in you, through you, to do something for His glory. Yes. Hallelujah. So you're ready to root out and pull down? You're ready to build up? Right now, some of us in here are closer to God than we've ever been in our lives. Amen. And yet, you're under attack. 
Whoo, Satan is tugging at your soul trying to drag you to hell. It don't get... There's never a point where you reach where you say, I have no worries. There's nothing going on. You've got to be ready to fight at all times. Amen? Amen? Satan sees you getting closer. He's getting upset. When you get on fire for the Lord, hell starts raging, man. Amen. Huh? Amen. <laughs> you want to know why, right? I told you already, but just in case you missed it, Satan don't want to be alone. <laughs> he tries to remind you of your past because he knows what his future is. Y'all read the end, right? You read the last chapter of the book. You know, we win! Amen. Woo! <laughs> Bro brothers and sisters, you may be in a mess right now. Some of you are. Some of us are. We're in a mess. But God wants to take your mess and turn it into a message so bad. And you can with His power. God can turn our mess into a message. You want that, right? Yeah. He could take your mess of unbelief. Uh-oh. Somebody need to hear this. He could take your mess of unbelief Amen. and turn it into a message of faith. Amen. He could take your mess in drug addiction and turn it into a message of restoration and deliverance. Amen. He could take your message of alcoholism or whatever it is and turn it into a message of love, restoration, recovery, and hope. Is that powerful or what? Yes. Come on. Glory. He can take your mess in a broken marriage. And he can turn it into a message of hope. And love. And restoration. I've had brothers and sisters come to me so many times. I don't do much counseling. because <laughs> I'll just tell you like it is. Well I ain't happy. Well you ain't supposed to be happy. You're supposed to make the spouse happy. Well, I don't want to talk to you no more. <laughs> well, go talk to somebody else. God's going to tell you the same thing. Open up the Word. He don't care if you're happy. He wants to know how you're treating the spouse that He gave you to take care of. Amen. He could care less if you're happy. Woo-wee. That wasn't in my notes. Somebody need to hear that. <laughs> right, now, right now, you need to believe that you're bigger than any of your circumstances. Amen. You need to believe that you're bigger than your circumstances. We let our circumstances beat us down. We say, I just quit. I just can't take it no more. Fooey. You can put other whatever other kind of word you want in there for it as long as it's a God word. Fooey. You're bigger than your dilemma. I remember, I'm saying you're bigger. You're bigger than your circumstances. You need to understand the power of God is in you. That makes you bigger. The power of God is in you if you've accepted Him. If you've allowed yourself to be an open vessel for the Holy Spirit to work, you are bigger than the circumstances you're in. You're getting this, right? Yeah, yeah. Glory. Hallelujah. If I can ever get you all to understand how powerful you really are. Uh-oh. This is a sleeping giant right here. How many people's in here, Randall? How many people we got? There are 66 in here, and we're a sleeping giant. Now, that sounds like just a few people, but there's 66 messages being given. There should be 66 people including myself that's counting me right applying it to our lives to be changed for God's glory to do something amen if I could just get you to realize how powerful and how much power you have oh there'll be no stopping you some of you some of you've been turned loose since you since you came here and I became your 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 flesh shepherd you you're bold in the Lord saying prayers and bringing in salvations for God's glory well we ain't through yet <laughs> Everybody needs to be doing that. There's no, hey, look, if you've got the power, say, I got the power. If you've got the power, then I'm telling you, there's no stopping you from witnessing to people. Wit witnessing to people about the Lord Jesus Christ at a gas pump. At Walmart. Man, we go on a ride, and you know what the Holy Spirit inside you does? It prepares people before you get there. You think it's because we had this vest on, and we were all in a group, that the lady at the counter goes, I need you to pray with me. That was the Holy Spirit. That's the power in you. Say, I got the power. You got the power? Glory. Hallelujah. Being at a restaurant at Denny's feeding our face and Big Mama says, I need prayer. I want some prayer. That's the Holy Spirit. That's you touching other people. God's touching through you. You got the power. 
We're unstoppable. If you'll just get it through your head, how much power you got. And it's my job to tell you. Some of y'all right now, if you get a hold of that power, you'll say, you know what? I need to go to Bible study. Even better than that, some of y'all are going to say, I need to give a Bible study. Woo! Glory. Some of y'all are going to say, I can pray for the sick. Some of y'all are already doing it now. You, some of y'all wouldn't even open up that clam. I say, hey, won't you pray? Now you're out there and say, oh, my shoulder hurts. By the name of Jesus right now, I cast that out and I say, get out of him right now. I'm like, woo, did I turn you loose? Woo, glory, hallelujah. The Holy Spirit got inside that person, amen? You have the power. People look at you like you're crazy. You know why, right? Because the world don't like a bold Christian. The people are like, well, I don't think you should be outside praying. I had a lady tell me this. I don't think you should be raising your hands praying over them bikes. Oh, by the way, we're going to have two bike blessings after church, amen? So we're going to be raising our hands and praying over some bikes, Amen. Some of y'all are going to be saying, I can witness to the lost. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Anything and everything. It don't matter. Some of y'all have been called to a specific ministry and you ain't doing it. Ouch. I'll say it one more time. It ain't in my notes. What did I say? Some of y'all have been called to a ministry and you ain't doing it. No, God put it, on, put it on a couple's hearts to start a ministry we don't have. We got so many outreaches, man. We need about a 400 people church. Because some of our tires are tired. Because we're doing so much. Glory. I started writing down everything we done. I thought was done. There's two more things we're still doing. I was like, man, when are we going to stop? And God said, you ain't going to stop. We are the children of the Most High God. We have the power. Amen. 1 John 4, 4 says, Ye are of God, little children, and have overcome them. For greater is he that is in you than he is in the world. That's us. What's in you? What's in you? Woo! Glory. Power. The Holy Spirit. So you need to wake up. I said you need to wake up. I'm going to keep saying wake up. Because we need to have a soul winning revival, folks. Now that word scares people. And you know, you're getting a little Pentecostal again. Maybe I'll be Presbyterian next week. But I'm telling you, so, sometimes. I'm telling you. I say revival and you all thinking about a tent in the back. How many of you all started thinking five days, tent in the back? There's a couple of you. Hey, that's what we do, right? That's what a revival is. We're going to have a tent in the back. We're going to have services every week, every day of the week, till people get saved. Yeah. Well, you know what a revival is? I'll tell you what a revival is. A revival is when you walk into a place and a person asks for prayer. The revival's already started. Amen. A revival is when you go on a walk for suicide prevention and two kids give their life to the Lord. The revival started. Y'all getting this, right? That's when a revival starts. A revival is when somebody calls you and says, I need you to pray right now. They call because they know we'll pray over the phone. You know, there are so many places you go and you say, hey, man, my, my shoulder's been hurting me really bad and my wife's got the crud and I just need you to pray. Well, I'll put you on a prayer list. Well, you don't want to tell nobody from this church to put you on a prayer list. I'll tell you what right now. At least most of us, right, Amen. God can take the worst situation you've ever been in and turn it around. And some of us are in a pretty bad situation. God can take the job that, that you have right now and give you a raise. God can do that. And we talked about some mighty things he did last week. Amen. Amen. God can take the worst of the worst and make the best out of the best. I mean, he can take the worst of the worst and make the best of the best. I mean, come on. Now, that's, that's pretty cool. We, again, we talked about it last week. God is he's waiting on us to believe. He's waiting on you to believe that you have the power. That you can do these things. You know, when you step out and finally open your mouth and pray with somebody, it's kind of hard to stop anymore because you just feel so good. You feel so good that you prayed. You need to say, I refuse to die in this dilemma. Whatever it is you're in, and say, I'm going to be, I'm going to accept the power that God's given me and I'm going to step forth and be victory, victorious over this. Amen? We, end, we need to understand the power of the Holy Ghost. Because you got it. Amen. You give your life to the Lord. There's too much greatness inside of you. Oh, that's good. There's too much greatness inside of you for you just to sit back and be defeated by the devil. You know, some of us are, are, are overcomers and we just stop there. And that's not good. Is there anyone here that's tired of their dreams dying? There's one. There's another one. God, you're, you're just letting God know right now your dream's dying. 
Amen. Your dreams are dying. You know why your dreams are dying? Is because you're not grabbing a hold of the power. The power. I've seen people that have been restored through addictions. You know, once you become an overcomer, God wants to use you to do something else. You see, you know, the lady at the well got saved. She didn't wait until she went through a discipleship class and figure out how to talk to people. She went into a city and got people saved. Or you see what I'm talking about? When you get, when God touches you and you get healed from something, you, you get delivered from something, He's ready to use you right now. He don't care if you go to another 12-step course and figure out what you've got to do to get people to start understanding. He just wants you to share your testimony with people about what He's done in your life so other people can enjoy it too. But when you don't grab a hold of that, you don't go with the power that God has put in you after He has delivered you, where do you end up? Right back where you came from. And you just see a 360. <laughs> I see it. I see it all the time and some of y'all are living it. Well, God needs to help me with this and boom, you get through it and you're like, wow, okay. And then you just, you just, you don't do nothing. Next thing you know, you're right back down here again. You got that monkey on your back. He gets that monkey off your back and you turn around and do it all over again. God wants to use you the minute he's got you out of that. As soon as you become an overcomer. But some of us are being taught or we just believe that once we've overcome, we just thank him and we're good. But he wants to use you in so many mighty ways. Romans 13, 11, 12 says, And that knowing the time, that now it is high time to wake up out of sleep, for now is our salvation nearer than we believed. The night is far spent, the day is at hand. Let us therefore cast off the works of darkness, and let us put on the armor of light. Let us cast off the darkness. Okay, it's gone. Put on the armor of light now. The same day, right then. Do it, Amen. It's time for the church to realize who we are in Jesus Christ. Who are we? Where is the power? I have the power. I have the power. We are anointed. We are commissioned to go into the world and spread the gospel of Jesus Christ. It wasn't a suggestion. It was a commission. That's what we're to do. That's what you're to do. Commission to heal the sick. What? Wait a minute. You're going a little too far now. You, we're supposed to heal the sick, folks. We're supposed to cast out devils. We have the okay from God. <laughs> God gave us the okay to do that. We have the power of God living in through us, through the Holy Spirit, to do what He's asked us to do, commissioned us to do, told us to go do. We have to understand who we are. Who are you? Do you have the power? Woo! The worst time in your life. Some of y'all sitting there going, well, I just, you know, I'm just not ready yet. People I've talked to, the Lord's put on my heart, I've talked to people and said, well, you know, you might be, you know, God might want to use you to do this, you know, and you just came out of this darkness, you shed the darkness off, God's touched you, you've claimed it, He's got you through the storm. I said, well, God might want to use you to do this. <laughs> and you said, well, I'm not ready yet. You got the power. What do you mean you're not ready? God wants to touch your lips. Y'all getting this, ain't you? Yeah. Ooh, glory. The worst time of your life is the best time in your life for God to do supernatural things. Amen. Woo. Hebrews 11, 6. Hebrews 11, 6 says, But without faith it is impossible to please Him. For he that cometh to God must believe that He is, and that He is a rewarder of them that diligently seek Him. Seek Him. Seek what He wants you to do. God has always took the least of humanity and done the most with it. Don't get down on yourself. That's Satan. I already covered this in the beginning of the introduction. Satan tries to remind you of your past so you won't try to do what God has asked you to do. Mm. Come on, man. Abraham was an idolater. And he became the father of all. We can be in some pretty good company then, huh? He don't want us to be the father of all. He don't want us to do a whole lot but just talk to people about Jesus. But some of us can't even do that. You know, he took farmers. I love this. I wish I thought of this myself. He took farmers, fishermen, tax collectors, and harlots to bring his word. Yeah. Woo! And me. <laughs> and I certainly was running away from this, hey? Woo, glory. He took what looked like a mess and gave you a message. 1 Corinthians 1.27 But God had chosen the foolish things of the world to confound the wise. There's a bunch of people in Gatesville still confounded that I'm up here. I'll tell you that right now. And God had chosen the weak things 
of the world to confound the things that are mighty. That's the way God does things. So no matter what you think of yourself, quit. Because you have the power. God has given you the power and he wants to use you today. He can take you and me and anyone else that he pleases. It don't matter. And fulfill his will for this day and time. There is nothing impossible for our God. If we'll believe. If we'll believe. If we'll believe. Whew. It looked impossible for Abraham and Sarah to have a child. <laughs> That's why that wasn't funny when you're talking about me and wife, my wife having two kids, okay? <laughs> she put it on Facebook. I was like, whoa, okay. I'm going to abstain for a little while. So. <laughs> That'd be a miracle. Anyway, <laughs> it looked impossible to Moses and the Israelites for the Red Sea to be opened up. Huh? And one faithful man stood forward with a stick and... <laughs> It was possible for God. It looked impossible for a woman of 12 years with a blood issue to be healed. She had spent all her money and all her time with all the doctors. The great physician. She touched Jesus Christ and she was healed. Amen. It looked impossible for David, a young man, to take out over a 9 foot giant. But with God, he did it. Are you going to kill your giants? That's another good one, isn't it? Are you counting the giants or are you counting your grapes? <laughs> Amen. I know of some of you right now, it looks impossible. You're, you're looking at something, you're facing something, and you feel like it's impossible. And you feel like this message was for you, and it is. God's, God's given it to you this morning. I know it looks impossible for a small group of 66 people to change Gatesville, but it's not through God. God wants us to make a change. And I'm going to tell you, I, there's a pretty good odds, even though some of us travel together to different places, most likely by the time it gets dark today, all 66 of us will have went to different locations, and we will have covered over 100 locations before it gets dark. You do understand this, right? So if you, uh, if you agree that you have the power and that God is inside of you and that God has commissioned you to tell somebody about His Son, Jesus Christ, today, that's over 100 places it's going to get touched today. And I'm going to tell you what, you only got to do that till next Sunday and most of Gatesville is going to get touched. So just by mathematics, it's possible. But with God, it's surely possible. He wants to take a small group of people and change Gatesville. Oh, I pray every church is doing this kind of message. Because if he is, it's done deal. Because I know some of you will not apply this. That's just the way it is. But God wants to be intimate with you. Glory. Woo! Hallelujah. John uh, 14, 12 and 14. Hmm. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that believeth on me, the works that I do, we're going to do too. He says he'll do also. He's talking to us. The works he did. He's telling you you can do this. Okay. And greater works. Whoa wait a minute. Is that in everybody's Bible? Wait a minute. Now this is Jesus talking. Let's, let, 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 let's look at this again. He says verily verily I say unto you. Okay. Kirk. Verily verily I say. I'm telling you right now Kirk. He that believeth on me. Now this is Jesus. Okay. He that believeth on me. The works that I'm doing, you, you'll do also. Okay, I can. But what's he saying? And he says, and greater works than these. Oh, wait, wait a minute. No. Is, that, is, that, is that really in it? I didn't type that wrong. That's in everybody's Bible? Y'all getting this, right? That's the power of the Holy Spirit. Well, how can that be? Oh, oh, he, he, oh, he says, because I go unto my Father, and whosoever ye shall ask in my name, that will I do that the Father may be glorified in the Son. <laughs> Say, I have the power. Say, I have the power. Amen. The Holy Spirit is now on us. We can do these things. Greater things. Believe, claim, expect it to happen. See, the thing is, is when, some, when you do say a prayer and something don't happen, <laughs> Satan jumps in it right away. See, I told you it don't work. It don't work. You just cut it out. Huh? Don't ever question why it may take longer. Just move on to the next one and keep praying. Don't even look back. Some people have said, I'm a fly-by preacher. One guy's knee was hurting, and I just I claim it in the name of Jesus. I kept on going. Didn't even touch the man. Larry's going, hey, come here, come here. Hey, look, look. That's, you see that? Glory, hallelujah. But I pray for people, and nothing did happen yet. I don't know when God's going to get around to it, but I certainly ain't going to let it bother my faith. Amen. Amen. You have the power. If you shall ask anything in my name, I will do it. Amen. 
the last scripture in closing is Numbers 23, 19. God is not a man that he should lie. Neither the son of man that he should repent. Hath he said and shall he not do it? Or hath he spoken and shall he not make it good? Brothers and sisters in closing. Let God take your mess. That you're in right now. And turn it into a message. Because if you're not. You might as well look at that scripture again. Because you, you're calling him a liar. Because he already said. I've done this for you. And you can do better things than I'm doing. Make a difference today. Touch people. In Gatesville, Coriel County. Uh, wherever you came from. In Texas probably. I don't think anybody's not in Texas here. Glory. Well I take that back. Are you in there? Brother? And anybody else that's watching. You have the power. Believe, claim, and expect it. Make a difference. I forgot. Little bitty church like this and we touching. God's touching so many people. Did you ever think a little wooden building ready to fall down in Gatesville, Texas be touching people from California to Florida, New York to Texas? That's all God. That's just strictly God. So let God take your messed up life and turn it into a message today. He wants to use you. Let's pray. Father God, I thank you again. Such an awesome, powerful message that you've provided for each and every one of us. Lord, I thank you for what you've showed me. And Lord, I just pray right now that nobody leaves unchanged. That we all leave changed for your glory. That we apply what we learn today. That we agree that we have the power. And that Lord, give us the courage to use that power. Before it gets dark today, Lord, don't let us miss the divine appointment. Lord, I know right now there's 66 divine appointments. Counting me, there's 66 divine appointments that you've set up at a minimum. One per person of an individual you want us to just let know that Jesus is the most important thing in our lives. And see if it is in theirs. Without thumping on a Bible, but just showing them with a smile and letting them, Jesus loves them. Pray with them. Pray for healings. Lord, I'm claiming, believing, expecting healings. I'm I'm believing recovery, restoration, and I'm believing for salvations and rededications for your glory from this small amount of people that you want to use in a mighty way today. And it's in Jesus' name I pray. Amen.